Hello guys, wow, in today's video we have so many important things to talk about. What is happening between China and the US, Tesla price reduction and Model 3 being top selling car, Costco earnings report, Zoom earnings expectations and an update on the US economy. But now let's talk about Tesla. There were two huge news from them this week. The first one was the cut car prices by up to $5,000 in the US and China. They reduced Model S and Model X prices by $5,000 and Model 3 by $2,000. Now the Model 3 ranges between $30,000 to $40,000 per car, making it even more accessible. In my opinion, this can be very harmful for other automakers since converting the Model 3 to the new $30,000 to $40,000 car becomes an even more competitive car. We all know that the Model 3 was the game changing for Tesla since just 24 hours after being released, the company already took $1,000 deposit from 198,000 vehicles. And at the end of that month in which it was released, they already had 325,000 orders, converting Model 3 into the second best selling car in the entire US for that exact year. In my opinion, that was expected since Tesla went from selling cars for over $70,000 to selling a more accessible car for almost $40,000. Nowadays, you can see a lot of other brands starting to create their electric vehicles, but it is still very difficult to compete against a company that has been collecting data, improving their systems in their cars, and gaining market shares for years. After this price reduction, I expect Model 3 will make Tesla able to increase their market share even more. The other crazy news related to Tesla this week was the Model 3 beat Honda Civic as top selling car in California. According to Everquote, this was the list of the most popular cars in California in 2018. The Toyota Camry, Honda Civic, Prius, and so on. In this 30 cars list, you couldn't find any Tesla model, not even Model 3. Then on quarter one of 2020, Tesla Model 3 became the top one vehicle in California, beating Honda Civic, Toyota Camry, Toyota Corolla, and Honda Accord. Take into consideration that these four cars do not compete with Tesla's car system, nor their price. All those cars are setting at a price of $20,000 to $25,000, and Model 3 has a price of $37,000. That's almost 50% more expensive and still was the top selling car in California. Also, in the near luxury side, Model 3 has 52.2% of market share, being top one beating BMW 3 Series, Lexus ES, Mercedes C-Class, and Audi A4. What this means to me is that we are seeing how electric vehicles are gaining a lot of market share, and it will continue like that. I can say that maybe in 5 to 10 years from now, majority of people, in, if not 95% of them, will own an electric vehicle and obviously Tesla is very well positioned at the moment. I do have to say that I see Tesla right now as a very expensive stock. Still, there are a lot of analysts predicting Tesla stock price to get to $2,000 and to even $7,000 by 2025. Then buying at this current price would be awesome. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not buying Tesla at this moment. I might regret in the future, but I think it is overvalued, but I can get a better price later on. Let me explain what has been happening with China lately. Over the last two years, there has been a lot of tension between both countries because of a trade war which has been a roller coaster for the stock market. China accused the United States of unfair tariffs on Chinese goods and then US argued that China was stealing patents on the World Trade Organization. After a lot of controversy, both countries reached to an agreement on January of 2020, where both countries agreed to eliminate unfair tariffs, Chinese legal protection for patents, trademarks and more. That deal also explains that Beijing had to import an additional $200 billion worth of American goods and services over the next two years, which would include $80 billion in manufactured goods, $53 billion in energy, 
32 billion dollars in agriculture and 35 billion dollars in services. We need to understand that this trade war is not over yet. Obviously, the pandemic has affected both countries economically speaking, and now Trump said that he is waiting to see if China will fulfill its obligation. Now, a new war has started. Remember last week I talked about the US Senate passing a bill which requires Chinese firms to be audited by US regulators in order to be listed in the US stock exchange. Well, now last week there was another controversial news since, as Trump said, China replaced its promised formula of one country, two systems with one country, one system. Let me explain what that means. Years ago, Hong Kong was occupied by British. Years later, Hong Kong achieved independence by request of the People's Republic of China. Since then, Hong Kong was a special administrative region controlled by the People's Republic of China, but it enjoyed its autonomy, meaning that there will be one China, but that Hong Kong and Macau would retain their own economic and administrative systems, while the rest, mainland China, uses communism with Chinese characteristics. Both Hong Kong and Macau continue with its own governmental system, legal, economic and financial affairs, including trade relations with foreign countries, such as the favored trade status with the US. What happened lately was a security law passed by Chinese parliament which will eliminate the one country, two systems agreement. This would definitely undermine Hong Kong autonomy and its special status. Trump already wants to begin the process of eliminating the exceptions policy which gives Hong Kong different and special treatment. This will obviously affect every treaty they have with the US, from their extradition treaty to their export control, use of technology and more. Last week I gave my expectation for Costco earnings report and wanted to analyze their earnings with you today. They reported an increase of only 7% in revenue in comparison with the same period last year. Even though they didn't have an increase in net income as I expected, it only decreased 7.5% from $906 million to $838 million due to costs related to COVID-19, such as incremental wages and sanitation. Their comparable sales increased 4.8%, while their e-commerce sales increased 64.5%. That 7.8% that you see here is an increase in comparable sales, which excludes impacts from changes in gasoline prices and foreign exchanges. Their cash-on-cash -cash equivalents increased 29% since September of 2019, increasing their current assets by 7.5%. Their total assets increased 14% since September 2019. And even though their current liabilities decreased by almost 2%, their total liabilities increased 16%. Even though they had a decrease in net income, I do think that they were able to sustain during the toughest times. Costco food traffic decreased because of the stay-at-home order during the quarter. After this, we can see that definitely Walmart was the only one able to have an increase in their net income and in my opinion that was because of their e-commerce sales increase. For next week, we have fewer companies reporting earnings such as Zoom, Campbell, Slacks, DocuSign, Michaels and more. For this video, I will analyze Zoom and give you guys my expectations for their earnings. We all know that Zoom has become everything to people since quarantine started. Birthday parties, weddings, classes and more. In their annual report, they had an increase in revenue of 89%. We all know that Zoom is an exponentially growing company which almost doubles its revenue on a yearly basis. I do expect them to have a mind-blowing quarter since literally Every single person and majority of the companies are using their platform to work. I do have to say that maybe their stock continues going up, but I do think that is overvalued. Also, they have a lot of competition with Google, Microsoft, and Facebook who also launched their video call app. Still, they have been the clear dominant in the industry for the whole 2020. Now, the stock market continues going up since the S&P 500 is up 3.13% since Monday and the Dow Jones 3.9%. A lot of people are betting that we can reopen everything sooner than expected and that we will completely go back to normal. 
we have to take into consideration that right now we don't only have to beat the virus, but also the unemployment rate here in the US, which continues increasing every single week. Nearly 41 million Americans are jobless right now since the COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. I do recommend you guys to go and watch this video right here or this whole playlist. If you enjoy and found a lot of value in my videos, consider subscribing and smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you and see you next time.